Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock. We all know where we should be, and we're all here. At least most of us are here. Anyway, thank you for all coming again. I know you had other plans, other places to go, people to see, but you decided to come here to our monthly meeting. And we'll open up with a moment of silence, please. Thank you. And I want to introduce uh, any new residents here. I know we have Bob and Lynn and Lynn Butcher. Butcher, Butcher, Butcher. you know, on one side. Please stand up and let's welcome them. They just moved into 146 Sycamore Street. We're glad to have you here. And then we had another person, Josephine Griswold. I understand she's not here, but she also moved in across the hall from me up on uh, third floor of Cox Hall, but she had another important meeting to go to other than this. I just don't understand it. You know, I mean, this is the meeting of the month. But um, anyway, we'll introduce her next month. Is there anyone here that has never been introduced? This is the first time you've attended one of our meetings here. We've all, all regulars here, we've all been here. Well, thank you, thank you for your continuing participation. Well, we do have a couple of new staff members, and I'm going to allow Jan to introduce them, and they'll give us a, a long bio of all their past history and why they're here and why we they're joining us today. Jan? Good morning, everyone. I do. I have two new directors that I would like to introduce to you, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you. So first is Adam, <clears throat> excuse me, Adam Feldbauer, and he is our new health services administrator. So that means that he oversees the Borden Health Center, the assisted living uh, Webster, and also the clinic. So Adam. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Jan said, my name is Adam. Uh, I am Originally from Indiana, uh, so I have a Hoosier background. I did middle school through college there. Uh, went to Indiana University. Um, I graduated with a bachelor's in public health with a concentration in healthcare administration. Uh, upon graduation, I uh, was hired by a company called Sodexo. I was a resource manager, and that was a really good opportunity for a a uh, fresh out of college uh, individual who's getting their foot in the door. And I was uh, able to go to hospitals and senior living communities and support the accounts that they had either with startups or uh, transitions or just uh, being an extra set of hands. Eventually I was recruited by uh, Westminster Canterbury and Lynchburg uh, to oversee the um, environmental services department. And simultaneously, I um, completed my administrator in training to uh, become a licensed nursing home administrator. And so when I obtained my license, I uh, was hired by Martha Jefferson House in Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, kind of a small, unique boutique community uh, right in the heart of UVA, uh, commonly mistaken for a fraternity and sorority house. <laughs> Um, so some fun, uh, some fun times there. Um, uh, I met my wife, I should say, in Lynchburg uh, when I moved uh, to Virginia in 2011, and um, we had an opportunity to go back to Lynchburg, and that's when I was at the summit um, when it was acquired by uh, Lifespire of Virginia. You may have heard of them, and they have different communities throughout Virginia. Um, and I was the executive director overseeing the independent living and assisted living uh, communities there. But obviously now I'm at the uh, beautiful Kendall at Lexington. I heard of Kendall at Lexington from the former CEO, uh, Sean Kelly, at a, a leading age uh, Virginia conference talking about 
uh, the, how beautiful this campus was and how they used dynamite to make uh, room for extra cottages and stuff. So I, that always stuck in the back of my head there. So um, uh, I'm thrilled to be here. I should have said uh, in between Martha Jefferson House and the summit, I did uh, I completed my master's degree online with the University of Massachusetts, Boston. So I'm also a beacon, even though I've never been to Massachusetts. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, my home life, I currently live in Rustburg, Virginia, where um, right outside of Lynchburg, where my wife is from. Uh, she's a twin and we live two minutes down the road and they have three kids, we have two. Uh, my son just turned five on Monday. He's in kindergarten and my daughter is two years old. She'll be three in uh, February. So I'm sure you'll see them. I have two dogs. One of them comes to work with me every now and again. Hasn't made an appearance here yet, but um, that's Riley Sue. She's, uh, she likes going to work. She's kind of mad at me right now because she hasn't uh, been employed lately. Um, but uh, yeah, so we also have eight chickens. So if you're interested in some uh, fresh eggs, uh, please let me know. But uh, I appreciate everybody being so friendly and welcome. And uh, if you have uh, a moment and you're in the Webster or Borden Center, please uh, say hello. Thank you. Okay, and uh, just so you know, moving forward, Adam will be attending the resident association meetings and will be on occasion uh, giving some updates to the Borden and Webster Center. So. Good way to uh, get to know Adam and he be a part of independent living as well. So the second director is Brian Burton, who you may have already seen running around downstairs. He is going to be transitioning or uh, we actually have two director of culinary uh, services right now. So, you know, you know, the one. <laughs> And she's going to be retiring at the end of the year. But Brian, uh, you know what? When you find good people, you hire. So we weren't going to put off uh, any longer. So we do have a little bit of overlap, which is never a bad thing. But I'm going to ask Brian to come up and introduce himself as well. You have to almost swallow the mic. And I'll, I'll keep it short. So. I do get a little long-winded, and it's not even Sunday. So, um, My name is Brian, and uh, just to introduce myself, I've met quite a few of you. Um, it's funny. <laughs> I am the successor to Judy, so, uh, to, or the one. But I, <laughs> I uh, have enjoyed work. I thoroughly enjoy working with her. And she, again, is very passionate about this property and uh, it's just and you know just electric as far as that goes um and uh i'll work on my my sarcasm so but <laughs> but uh, love her to death have a chance to work with her for a little bit looking forward to um, transitioning um, as she gets into december her goal from what i understand december is to do a little bit more fishing and a little less working so that's that's the rumor on the street so so a little bit about myself I'm originally from the West Coast, grew up out in the West Coast, California area, uh, Southern California, uh, San Fernando Valley area, then uh, that whole area has changed. So grew up in that area, moved a little south towards the Riverside, Semecta area, um, and went through high school out there. Um, and at that time, I was very much involved, did a little bit of construction through high school and wasn't sure if that was a career path or not, got pretty good at it, and then decided to make the change. Because on the job site, we talked about food, um, sports. I don't think we talked about the job site much, but then it went back to food again, and then food, and a little bit more about food. And so, uh, and sometimes after work or during work, you know, a, a grill might show up on the back of a tailgate of a truck, you know, and just went from there. Uh, went to school at Le Cordon Bleu, Pasadena, so traditionally trained. One of the last classes there that still did some training, not only in California, but also in Europe. So I had a chance to travel out there and do some traditional cuisines. Uh, moved on from there to the director of services or food services for a school district um, shortly after my training there. 
And that was right during the time when they went with healthy options. So the governor, we had a brand new governor at the time, governor at the time, and he decided to change all of the legislation, pull sodas and chips and all those things out of our high schools and different things like that without a plan in place. Man, imagine that. So all of us uh, together, we had to figure out a solution to come together and have some healthy options. And so at that point, they started offering culinary programs in high schools, and some of those uh, opportunities started then. And so even in those days, several years ago, 20 plus years ago, we were uh, on the cutting edge of some of those things. About that time, that's when those wonderful pizzas that I remember in high school probably had more grease than anything else on it. That's about when that time that went away. Um, and some of those things like that. And now it's a little bit more of a commercial kitchen setting. Uh, from that, it went on to uh, the uh, uh, Art Institute or um, at Pittsburgh. And so I uh, spent some time up in Pittsburgh. My dad's in Pittsburgh and graduated with a bachelor. So um, over that course of time, living in California, and now I started to raise a family. So uh, ran into a situation where I got on a committee. They were building a brand new cooking school. I had not heard of it before and um, decided to be on their PAC committee as they were building the new property. Uh, they offered me a position as a part-time culinary instructor. And then I took that for quite a few years, became a director of a program. And then I became a culinary director at a culinary school and did that for about, about nine years. So the company is uh, kind of still around, but it's called the Art Institute. There's still one uh, in Virginia Beach. There's still one um, in uh, Tampa and a few other places. So I actually was the director of the property in Tucson, Phoenix, and also at the one in Las Vegas. So I love to cook. Um, and also from a collegiate level, um, did that professionally um, and, and still have uh, had a chance to work with some of the really fantastic chefs out there and also to be able to train some of the chefs out there um, out on the West Coast. Um, very competitive being that we were in Nevada, lived there for, um, lived in uh, Arizona and Nevada for only a couple years. Very, very hot. They say it's a dry heat. Well, if you've never been there before, uh, feel free to make some cookies, okay? And if you'd like to know what that feels like, just pop open that oven door, look in there, and then imagine walking your dog in that heat, okay? So that's about the same. It's a dry heat. No, it is not a dry heat. It is a melt, melt you away heat. That's what that is. Um, so we ended up moving because there were several times we'd go out, take the dogs outside about 2 in the morning, 1 o'clock, take them out, do what they have to do, and it was still 100, 102.99, whatever it was. So anyhow, so into that, uh, opportunity came up to help run the program at the Art Institute of Virginia Beach. Now that, oh yes. I'm, I'm fine with East Coast and moved our way out here about six and a half uh, years ago. Purchased a home a little south of Richmond on the historical, uh, on the historical home society. Didn't quite understand what that meant. Um, it was, you know, it, it's 1855 colonial, big porch. Something that you're not gonna find where? You're never gonna find that in Nevada. <laughs> you're never gonna find that in Phoenix, nor in California. So we thought, wow, this is great. We always wanted, dreamed of a big porch. However, uh, whatever construction I had in high school came into play over the last few years, okay? And uh, we had a big seal on the side of our house that said we were registered, but that means we have to check with everybody before we can even uh, sneeze, dance, uh, tiptoe or anything. And uh, we just ended up uh, just listing that. Uh, our family is going to be moving to, to um, Buna. Buna. Buna Vista. <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm practicing. 
is hard. West Coast, so I'm like, buena, buena, no, 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 no. Okay, so if you have any any Spanish overtones, that's the West Coast draw, drawing it out, okay? And I'm practicing my y'all, so I'll get a little better on that, okay? Uh, when I, we moved out here, I learned about pimento cheese. I learned about fried food. I learned about things like some fish called whiting. I'm like, I didn't know what that was. Okay, I didn't know what whiting was. I didn't know what pimento cheese was. Uh, I've seen hush puppies, and you know, and I've made them before, but didn't quite understand the importance of some of the regional cuisine out here. Um, and like I said, just loved it. We have friends uh, that you know I had my first experience with crackling and pork skins out here. Uh, not very popular on the west coast, um, but again, something that we now just enjoy and love and are part of part of the community. Two kids, 24 and 21. So adult children uh, went from a large high maintenance home to a smaller one here in BV. So excited for that. We'll be moving out here officially in October. Um, just glad to be part of the community. I'm a cook at heart, chef at heart. Um, I've been a director for a while too. Um, so kind of a dual role in regards to that. And hopefully down the road we can do some other fun activities because food can be fun. So, all right, and that's all I have. Thank you. Four spots today for the kitchen. Four spots left for the kitchen tour today. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. What is it about culinary directors and an audience? <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Judy loves an audience, too. All right, so I'll just move right into my report. Um, also want to let you know that you'll see another new director on campus next Wednesday, Wayne Ferguson will be starting with us as our IT director, and he will be arriving um, on, on Wednesday the 27th. He will actually be commuting from Troutville, so he lives fairly close, uh, and he does come to us with uh, CCRC experience. He's currently uh, the director of IT at Richfield Living. We continue to recruit for a director of nursing in our Borden Center. Uh, we actually uh, had an interview scheduled today. We're using a recruiter, and 15 minutes before the interview, they're no longer interested. So, uh, welcome to our world, and, um, but we do continue to look for a director of nursing candidate. Denise O'Connor, who is our MDS coordinator, um, even if I told you what that meant, you wouldn't get it. So, it, it, she's an RN in the health center. Uh, she actually does, uh, the MDS is what allows us to be paid from the Medicare. Uh, so she's actually in that realm, but has been a director of nursing in the past. And she is working with Adam now as his interim uh, director of nursing. So we're thankful to Denise and we appreciate her willingness to step up and take this role. Uh, I do have uh, another resignation to announce. Uh, we did, I was made aware this week that Harold has decided to leave Kendall at Lexington. I had that same reaction, thank you. And probably a little more. He does have another offer. Uh, he will be working remotely and he will be working in cybersecurity. So that's what he wanted. Uh, he said to me, Jan, I would not be where I am right now without Kendall at Lexington. He said the last two years uh, has been a great experience. It's been a variety of different experience. And he said, thank you for that. Um, and he uh, really, he, he spoke to me a little bit because I would try to bribe him to stay. He didn't want it. Uh, but he did. He said, you know, cybersecurity is really where I wanted to be. I needed more experience, and I got it. So thank you. So we are trying to put a plan together. His last day is Friday uh, this week. So Wayne comes next Wednesday. Wayne is aware, and he's aware that we're looking for another uh, IT specialist. But 
trying to put together a plan for some oversight from the Kendall Corporation to help us through the next week or so. Uh, the CEO, Kendall Search, not this one. <laughs> I love my job. Uh, the CEO search is underway, and the recruiter, Corn Ferry, uh, has interviewed about 12 potential candidates for the Kendall Corporation CEO position. They are going to select six candidates by the end of September for the search committee to interview via Zoom, and then those interviews will probably be cut down to about three or four candidates uh, to enter into the final interview process. So I will keep you uh, informed of how that's going. The affiliation agreement and the trust agreement, the affiliation agreement is completed. The final draft is uh, already present. Uh, the board members are reviewing that. Uh, they are also, all the communities are asking questions, getting their very last concerns to the Kendall Corporation. And we are hopeful that we will all be signing that by the end of the fourth quarter. And then that contract will become effective January 1st, 2024. The trust agreement, which is the agreement that we are in with KCC. KCC was supposed to be leaving the end of September, but there is just so much that needs to be done. Uh, their scheduled exit from Kendall is December 31st. So that trust agreement um, is actually still with the attorneys. They are hopeful that by October, that will be a final draft as well that we can review and move forward with. So, and that's my report. Question. Yes. Under the new affiliation agreement, do we keep the name Kendall at Lexington? We do. We keep the name. So the trust agreement says right now that all the current Kendalls, including Kendall Crosslands, can keep the Kendall name. It's in a trust. It's owned by all of us, the trustees. If anyone decides to leave the Kendall Corporation moving forward, they will not be permitted to be called Kendall. And new Kendalls or new residences become a Kendall. Yes, the new, the new. The proposed Kendalls will become Kendalls, yes. Thank you, Jen. And that concludes our meeting. Uh, now, Todd is up next, but he has this very technical program he's going to promote. You can see the curtains opening, and we have a laptop. While that's going on for the next 15 minutes while they all get set up, uh, let me just talk about a couple of things. I want to thank the residents for, um, for donating to the association fund, which funds all our standing committees. Uh, we had 90 residents uh, write a check, uh, $40 or more, and we collected $5,805, which I think is a very respectful amount, and that will be able to uh, fund our our committees next year. So thank you very much for all those who made that donation. Um, we also have uh, an, another opening. Uh, you know, we, we man the front desk here uh, on Saturdays and Sundays so that if there's somebody here, if visitors come in or there's some emergency, whatever, we have a person at the front desk here. We have another opening the third Saturday from 12 to 2 p.m. If anybody's interested, in sitting at the front desk and monitoring uh, incoming visitors, whatever, on the third Saturday of each month from 12 to 2 p.m., please contact me and let me know so I can fill that position. And thank all those who do volunteer for that particular position. It's not very difficult. You also you bring a couple of magazines and a book, and you usually can get through most of the magazines and, and at least half the book before your two, your two hours is open. So it's not very difficult at all. There are a couple of times it's an emergency, but that's why we're there to handle whatever emergencies. But we always have board, and then if you can't figure out what to do, you call board, and they'll respond uh, to any emergency. So please, if you're interested in that, please uh, let me know so I can fill that position before the next third Saturday. And now Todd looks like he's going to give his presentation here, and everyone's set up. 
Is laptops on? On? You're on. I only needed 22 seconds, not 15 minutes. I just want to point out. So, next slide, please. About three times a year, I bring some charts and graphs and pictures to just help explain and, and fill you all in. So, uh, congratulations, this is one of the days. First topic, for the first time since I've been here, about 13 months, we are completely full and staffed in the facilities department. So, and one of those little blocks on this, that one, is this gentleman over here, Trey Brown, is our newest uh, facilities tech. I'm gonna have him talk for uh, about 30 seconds. About <laughs> Hello, my name's Trey. Uh, I'm born and raised here in Rockbridge County. Been here all my life. Been here all my life, and uh, can't wait to get to get some work done for you guys. He was waist deep, waist deep in problems down in one of our mechanical rooms, so I had him take his tuxedo off and, and come up the way he was. Uh, so I appreciate him coming to the meeting a little bit. You will also see we've got over here two new interns. Uh, Dave has worked with the local high school. They have a uh, what's it called? Work, work study program where they go to classes in the morning and in the afternoons they're free to go out and pursue jobs in the trades and so forth. So we have uh, two young men who are now working with us as interns about 15 hours a week uh, off to a great start. I think that program has a pool of about 80 students, but we've made that linkage for the first time uh, and who knows that might be a feeder into more blocks on the chart down the road. So good progress on those fronts. What that has allowed us to start making progress on is our work order backlog. Uh, when I started tracking the status of work orders in detail back in April, we had, oh, that's the next slide. I'll talk about that in just a second. You can see the pace of work orders of what we get and what it is up to now. Uh, that is a lot. Uh, over 40, uh, 30 a day, that averages out to four and a half per tech, including at my full staff now. And that's four and a half per tech if no one ever uses their paid time off. For some reason, they want to use their paid time off. No one has appointments, no one is sick, things like that. So it really is, in reality, five to six per tech a day. That's no big deal if the work order is, hey, I need you to deliver the new recycling bin to the new resident. Um, if it's, my sink has exploded and flooded my apartment, one-fifth of the day is not going to cut it for one person. So it's a significant amount of workflow volume. A lot of these we've created intentionally as preventive maintenance, so we try to get in front of things and do things to stop unscheduled failures. But the pace is busy. Uh, Dave and the guys stay very, very busy. But that has yielded some fruits already, which is the next slide I start to talk about. Back in April when I started checking uh, our work order status carefully, we had 279 old work orders that were between two years, I'm sorry, two weeks and over two years old. Uh, that backlog is down to 92 as of last week. Now some I have canceled because they're a capital project that has to be approved and, and directed that way. So I, I'm not gonna tell you if you had something from two years ago, it's magically been done because you'll probably look out your window and see it has not been. But some we have gotten done and some we have cleaned up the process a little bit to just help us manage that flow a lot more efficiently than we were. So I hope to have that continue onwards. I consider about two weeks the threshold of when I want to know about a work order. Um, because getting parts, getting things into the work queue takes some time. Um, if it's been a couple days, I, I really don't look at it yet because that pace we just talked about a moment ago. Uh, you probably noticed we're in the middle of a pretty significant roofing project. It's about 100,000 square feet, and it's in the horseshoe that I talked about previously. Some of you have asked me, so I'll mention it here. If you look up at the peaks of the roof where they've worked, you might see these black metal straps, what looks like a metal strap hanging out. Those are roof anchors. I have them putting access anchors every 25 feet around the roof, so we have a safe, legal way to do work on the roof in the future if we um, so if you notice those, that's what they are. They offered me red or black. I went with the black because I didn't think Jan would like the red one sticking out. Someone else will be up here explaining it. Next one, please. Uh, if you haven't looked at it on a nice, uh, pretty day outside, I think the new roofing is going on great. They have done about 40% of the project is completed, 353 roofing squares as of this morning. 
they have actually had to remove and replace less of the structural decking than I thought. Uh, they've done about 500 square feet of the decking has been pulled off due to rot and new decking put on. What they have done more of is actually reattaching a fair bit of the existing decking that was in decent shape actually, but the clips were improperly connected and things like that, which is great because if you look at the places they've not gone to, you see some waviness and some issues in the roof. That is gone in the uh, new, new areas. They have corrected that but they've actually been able to do it through repair and less replacement than I budgeted, which is good news. If the wood is rotted, I promise you, it's coming out and they're putting new in. You'll see the guys carrying the she uh, roofing sheaths up the ladder and getting it on there. 40% done, they're on, on track so far. Next. Uh, lots of little things I'm trying to wrap out when we get to the end of the year, so the capital budget, as you know, doesn't carry forward. And if I was told to do things and by the end of December I didn't get them done, I get yelled at. So uh, one of those uh, was a bottle filling station uh, here in Anderson to let people refill their bottles. It's a sustainability effort that was funded and approved. We got that put in recently. I think it's up to, there's a little counter on it that says how many plastic bottles it has removed from the flow. I think it's up to about 150 so far. So, uh, so far so good and then I think we're looking to add one each year going forward. Go ahead. The access control phase one project is underway in terms of project, but you have not seen folks here doing things yet. There's a big pile of parts and equipment growing every day uh, at their warehouse. So we are in the approved and funded and basically delivery queue at this point. I check with them about once a week to get an update. Uh, they don't have a firm date when they're coming yet because they have to get several more things here. That door project is significant. As you may remember, it's over 30 doors around the perimeter of the campus. There are a lot of our doors that give us problems, as I'm sure many of you, you know. Um, they are my last try to get several of those working. Uh, we've brought in several other door contractors and written many, many checks to them, and then a week later the doors don't work again. If they are unable to get some of those doors working, uh, we'll be looking at actually removing doors and having to replace them, because the doors and the openers we just continue to struggle with. They assure me they are going to be able to fix most of them well with their expertise. And if not, I'll at least have a shorter list moving forward to work on. Go ahead. We had to do some emergency repairs in Sunnyside. Uh, if you've been in there, the, there are some building envelope issues with water intrusion and things like that. Kenny, if you know Kenny Lesher, uh, we did this in-house. Kenny did a fantastic job on it. And I have put on the capital wish list for next year a pretty major look at Sunnyside to repair and prevent a lot of those things from repeating. Uh, I am not a Band-Aid person. I try to do things once and do them right. These are pretty much Band-Aids, but with a Capital One coming in the future, they're pretty good Band-Aids. Uh, and I think they'll suffice to get us down the road. Kenny did a great job on that. Go ahead. Uh, there are uh, four of our old, really terrible vehicles have gone to the great vehicle home in the sky. And we've replaced, you may have seen the new Housekeeping Gems electric vehicle driving around. Uh, we're looking to iteratively add maybe one a year to the fleet. If we charge them smartly at night, the operating expenses to them is very, very low compared to using the things we've been using. So they can be part of a long-term reducing operating cost sustainability effort as well. Um, as of today, it still is in good shape, not dented or scratched or anything so far. And, uh, so, so far, so good on the new Gems vehicle. We have some slab and foundation issues around the campus we've been working on. Some we have done piecemeal, case by case, and I'm also looking forward to doing some of those as capital projects in the future. So if you see the uh, Fortress Foundation people here, they've been here I think four times now doing different projects and estimates for us. Uh, these are big deals. Uh, we want to, and everything they found so far is fixable, which is great news. And once it's fixed, it's stabilized, and you can do other things, and, and things are back to level and things like that. So that project is going well. If any of them are large and disruptive, we will certainly send out emails and let folks know. Go ahead. Dave has put significant time and not insignificant money into addressing just some of our or internal organization storage security accountability issues. We have lots and lots of tools and equipment. Uh, we probably have less than we should have, um, but we have fixed that. And we now have all kinds of inventories and ways to secure things so the guys have the tools and they know where they are instead of scattered throughout 27 different mechanical rooms. Uh, Dave is actually putting together a tour with the facilities committee to go down and look at the new maintenance shed. 
if any of you want to tag along with that and look up with the facilities committee folks. And if you've seen it prior versus what he's got going down there now, you will really, really appreciate a huge difference in that. Go ahead. Our insulation upgrades continue. Uh, to date, we've done only about 9,000 square feet of insulation, but it really is making a difference already. These pictures are of the existing conditions as we go around campus and look. They range from completely uninsulated on the right, that's drywall. There's no insulation above that space of any kind, to a max of about R25. R is how you rate the resistance to heat transfer. It's an insulation nerd measurement. But uh, R25 is bad, big numbers are good. So those are existing conditions. Go to the next one. And you've gone now to a minimum of R40 or higher everywhere we've gone. So anywhere we're doing this repair, doing it, we're going to, our, the code minimum is now 38. We're going to between 40 and about 50, depending on where we are in the space and what we can get to. It is making a big difference in noise and a big difference in energy everywhere we've gone. So you'll be seeing a whole lot more of Kenny and me and the intern and the insulation below that. Go ahead. None of that comes cheap, though. Uh, I'm a little over budget, but Jan hasn't fired me and Felicia hasn't taken away my checkbook. So I only share that briefly to say that, you know, a lot of these are unplanned contingencies. And when we have to resource that, we have to resource it. It just has to come from somewhere. So we're a little over budget, but that's OK. We ended over budget last year and they let me come back in January. So, so far, so good. All right. Many of you know about our peak avoidance efforts where we try to avoid that large utility fee we pay to our peak energy uses usage. We had a, a, a max of 773, but it was on a Saturday, so they didn't bill us for that. Our previous max was 739. It is now down to 720. Uh, my goal was 700, uh, but we dropped it about 2.6% instead of the five I was hoping for because, next slide please, we were doing really, really good and you see that one red spike that happened on September 6th. Um, that sets our rate fee for the entire year. It happened for 30 seconds. The, the chiller broke, and after Highland and I were working on the chiller and got the paper clip to hold in place on the circuit board and the chiller turned on, it turned on about 100% for those 30 seconds once we got it repaired. We got it wrapped down, but that's all it takes for the utility to, to see that as our max spike. Still improvement. We still dropped 2.6% from where we were, and that 720 is my goal throughout the winter. Six times last winter, we were higher than 720. So that spike looks bad, but it might not be the worst one if we don't stay on top of that. So during the upcoming winter, we're going to try to make sure we're in good shape with that, and that is our new goal. And next year, we're going to get to below 700, and my, my goal is in the 690s next year. I think we can do that. New controls and insulation things will really help us. The efforts y'all did on the peak avoidance, you can see those dips on the days we intentionally did our project, really, really paid off. So we've shown we can do it, we just gotta get some of our uh, aging infrastructure to help us out and not give us that 30 second penalty. Next please. Well, across the board, it is good news in our utilities and our energy. So you can look, the top is electricity. We, this is, this is, these numbers are rolling years. So it's comparing a year period to another year period that way. It's always in apples to apples. That's 100,000 less kilowatt hours than we used at our peak. So the trend is down and we've made good progress. It's one and a half million cubic feet of natural gas less than we used to use. And it's about 600,000 gallons less of water than we used to use. So across all three utilities, we've been able to see improvements not just in energy with the sustainability aspect, but also the, the bean counter Felicia happy lady uh, aspect as well, because all that makes big, big differences. So yeah, the peak, of, the peak avoidance, I would have liked to have done better. We had an issue on that. In the big picture, it's part of the success and we've still got positive things to show for it. So thank you all for your help on that. Next one. So again, this is rolling up all the energy in one. We were about 25 and a half million KBTUs we're down about 7% in our total summed up energy usage from our peak. That's very, very good. Next. And look at the green bar down here. That is the first time uh, since I can find records our utility budget is on budget. Uh, so I went over by buying insulation on my other chart, but this is the chart I want everybody to pay attention to. The fruits of that are actually paying off. We can see last year we ended about 10%, almost 11% over the utility budget. When you're talking a three quarters of a million utility budget, that's a big chunk of money. 
um, we're back on track with that. So the things we've been doing and things you all have been helping with are certainly working, and I appreciate that help. On, please. All right, there's a lot of other things going on. I did not want to take more than the 13 minutes I was pro promised. Um, window cleaning contract, we did the pressure washing. We follow that with the window cleaning. Tentatively, they're starting the second week in October if we get all that uh, paper squared away. The upgrade for elevator number two is in progress. The lead time for those parts is 10 months. We ordered them in January. I'm starting to nag them now about where are my parts, when are you coming? Uh, they haven't answered me yet, so. But we sent them a check, so I'm pretty sure they're on the hook for it. Uh, we continue to work on insulation and the humidifier issues across campus. Now that we're getting out of cooling season, that's back on the top of the list to do. I met for the first time with the new Washington Lee student group this morning. Last year they did a pond study. The group of students this year is looking at traffic and pedestrian safety. Should we have different markings? Should we have different signs? Should there be sidewalks or trails in certain areas? Should there be speed bumps or speed tables? Things like that. Kind of a holistic pedestrian and traffic safety uh, project. Several of our fire panels are very old and we're looking at replacing them. That's part of this year's capital budget and next year, that's underway. The Sycamore Hill Trail uh, work began yesterday. yesterday. Uh, the guy showed up. We're taking that trail, which if you've walked it, is in pretty bad shape. There's a lot of construction debris and rocks and clay and not a lot of grass. Um, he is bringing in four inches of high quality topsoil and going to seed and dress that entire trail from the top where the picnic table is back down to the road. That work began. That's underway. That is one of many different landscaping and grounds efforts that continue across. We, you may have seen an arborist was here trying to trim some branches off where they were poking the building and in the way of residents and roofers alike. Uh, there are more foundation repairs in the, in, the, in the queue. The curtain here is on this year's capital budget to replace. I'm now on company number three, talking to them to say, I have money, please take it and give me a curtain. Um, I just don't get calls back and quotes uh, from, from people. Uh, so we're trying to do that. Cottage 1036, we're on contractor number seven. I think we're up to contractor number seven uh, to do a, a full renovation of that as well. I'm pretty confident this one will work with us. Uh, they're just really expensive, so we'll, we'll see what comes back on that. Our first six basically ghosted us and walked away. Yes, ma'am. It is. When I say 1036, that is the one everyone calls Isabel's Cottage. That's right. Uh, the deer calling program, uh, we are on track for the fall, because I know a lot of you uh, have gardens and you like your gardens more than deer. So. Last year, we only uh, harvested two, and you can tell in the herd this year, the munching has been, I'm told, worse than ever. Dave is in charge of that. Uh, he's made the link-ups with the Game and Inland Fisheries folks. Or actually, they changed their names now. They used to be Game and Inland Fisheries. Uh, we have three uh, hunters lined up and ready to go, and the permit paperwork is all in the way. So I, I'm pretty confident that's going to be a much more successful program than I was able to do last year. And lastly, last slide, please. It is budget season, uh, so we are very busy trying to figure out both operational needs and capital needs. But I'll tell you, and that's the only reason I kind of show some of the charts and graphs. If something has to be done, even if it's not on the budget, if I can explain why it has to be done and why we have to do it now, Jan and Felicia have made the resources available and we've gotten it done. That does knock out some of the nice to do things uh, when we have to do that, but that's kind of the definition of a gotta do and a nice to do. So some things move forward, but we have not been constrained uh, by going over budget. If something had to be taken care of, we've been allowed to take care of it, which is fantastic. And y'all's efforts in saving money in the other areas, like the utilities and the peak of oil, are a big part of that. So thank you. I think that's my slides. That's my slides. OK. Did I miss anything that you want to ask me about? While I'm up here? OK, thanks. Uh, will you be able to make uh, these slides available? So maybe, uh, so maybe have some, a couple of hard copies put in the library there. It might be a good idea since you went so fast, I couldn't uh, read all of it. One thing I noticed uh, for the reduction of water, obviously we have to make a greater effort to reduce our water consumption. So wine is a good option there. <laughs> so drink less water, drink more wine. I guess if you drink beer, you can do that as too, but that should be a priority, which I think we can all uh, willing to adopt to reduce that water usage there. Thank you very much, Todd. Uh, I think next month I'll have to give you at least 45, 50 minutes, uh, but that was very, very informative as always. Next we have Erica to give us an update on marketing.
Good morning. Todd had 13 minutes because I allocated three of mine to him, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Um, we've been very busy in marketing since we last met. We've clo Kevin closed on two cottages and one apartment. Um, currently, Katie and Kevin are working on six active reservations. We anticipate three more closings in 2023 and three closings already on the books for 2024. We have two spots we're working on reserving and um, we anticipate one apartment and one cluster cottage coming open at the end of October. So stay tuned for more information on that front. Um, I want to reiterate my appreciation for Katie and Kevin. They work very hard to keep uh, Kendall at Lexington fully occupied, and I'm really grateful for my team. Um, and I'll let them fill you in on a couple more stats regarding marketing. A couple th other things on my radar. On October 25th and 28th, we will have a photographer on campus, so I may ask some of you to be models. Um, so stay tuned on that front and please feel free to volunteer, um, otherwise I'm definitely going to recruit some of you. So thank you in advance for that. Um, and I also will probably be asking to take some photos of your fur friends, so just get them camera ready in the meantime. Um, we are still gearing up for our November 9th open house. Um, if you have family, friends that would like to be a part of that day, we welcome that. We still have several spots open. Um, if anyone that is interested in learning more about Kendall at Lexington, it's going to be a wine tour. Um, and we have 10 um, places we're going to show, so it may be a very fun day if you try at every, all 10 places. Um, and so please have them contact me, email me, or call me if they would like to RSVP for that. And finally, in an effort to reduce paper waste and streamline access to resident bios, we are no longer printing the blue book, but you can get that on Katie. And if you are absolutely gung-ho on having a hard copy of that, that's no problem. Just let Karen at the front desk know, and she's happy to continue printing bios. Um, we're also going to ask new residents if they prefer to have a hard copy. We're not taking that option off the table, but it does save about, I believe, I think we said eight reams of paper. Um, so that's that's quite a significant effort on our part. So um, let me know if you have any questions, but if not, I'll just turn it over to Katie and Kevin. Thanks. I didn't get allocated any time, so I'm gonna go super quick. Um, just let you know about tours, tryouts, and meetings this month. Kevin and I saw 22 different families come in, um, many of those from Lexington, Brackwood County area, um, but we also saw folks from Standardsville, Virginia, Lynchburg, Virginia, Blacksburg, Stanton, um, Richmond, and then out of the state, we saw people from Alabama, Maryland, a uh, couple from New York, California, and Ohio. So still splitting it pretty perfectly into thirds of Lexington and the surrounding area, a third from the rest of Virginia, and a third from the rest of the United States. So. Um, I'll let Kevin talk to you what that resulted in. Good morning. You've already heard about some of the move-ins. Uh, Lynn and Bob Butcher, they're here today, their first residence association meeting. Joe Griswold uh, moved into apartment 320, but she's not here in this meeting today. And then new residents, David and Susan Hopper, they became residents uh, earlier this month. They haven't physically moved here yet, but they will be moving into the cottage at 106 Sycamore sometime this year. Uh, let's see, two new reservations uh, since the last residence association meeting. Uh, we can't name names because they have to go through the whole approval process. You all know about that. But uh, cottage 1031 has been reserved and apartment 207 has been reserved. Uh, one of the incoming residents is from California and the other is from New York. Uh, new waitlist members, we added three new waitlist members in the last four weeks. All local, two from Lexington, one from Buena Vista. That brings us to 23 new waitlist members for the year. And we're currently at a total of 179 waitlist members. We had hit a peak about a month ago of 185, but you know what happens when we move them in, they're no longer on the waitlist. And occasionally we lose one just because they decided to go somewhere else got tired of waiting. Uh, that's it for marketing. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Wong or Diane, to give an update on culture and entertainment. You see that that's red. Is it red? Mm -hmm. But we can still hear you. I had a lot of talking this morning. Is this still working? Okay, good. I want to update you on the events coming up for the Culture and Entertainment Committee. Uh, we have a really good program uh, this afternoon about the Enigma Code and the people that helped um, break the Enigma Code. Melissa Davis from the VMI Foundation will be here, and she's going to have an Enigma machine with her, plus some other things. We have a trip to the Edelweiss restaurant on Friday. Um, sometimes if the bus is full, you can still go to something. You don't have to just go on the bus. You can go to it. Just sign up there so sometimes we have an idea of how many people are going to be going to something. Um, next week, we have a trip to the Halcyon Days, um, that, which is an, a cider place down on Route 11 South that you've seen. Um, and I think that that will really be interesting to try hard cider. This is a family that started uh, this up as kind of going back to nature, um, to getting out of the big city. So that will be happening. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, when we have buses, we have to have a minimum of seven people sign up for it to go. Otherwise, we have to cancel a bus. It is $2 per time if it's in the county. If it's out of the county, then it's $5 for a bus trip. Um, and we appreciate it if you sign up to follow through with it so that other people, if it's a full bus, don't have the opportunity. Um, we have several events that will be at the Lenfest Center um, and some other places in town, and now it's dead. Thank you. Um, we have we have uh, several events coming um, at the Lenfa Center. Again, you have to get tickets if you need to get a ticket. So uh, you can look at that list. It came out, I think, yesterday and is posted. Um, Kendall Singers in October are going to have another one of their fine programs. Uh, there's no business like show business, always popular. Um, and on the 11th of October, we're going to have the third in the series on programs about the Shenandoah Valley, uh, a video that was made in uh, 1976 for the Bicentennial, and there's more details about that in Connections. Um, the Volunteer Fair is going to be on October 13th, and we thank that committee so much for putting that on. Um, and we're having a parkway bus tour to see the fall leaves. Uh, we're going to go up later in the afternoon, head north so that the late sun comes through the leaves. We hope we have nice weather that day. And that's nice for people to see. And then we'll finish by going down into Stanton and eating at Baja Bean. So it will make for a nice outing for people. Um, right after our next resident association meeting, we're going to have a trip to wine tasting at the Virginia Vineyard. So we have a lot of taking advantage of the nice fall weather and opportunities here coming up. Um, I want to also mention the streaming that, Dennis, we thank you so much for doing all the streaming events here and in Webster. So keep posted for those. And we continue having game day every Sunday. Thank you. And now you have a member of the nominating committee. That's the group that is going to select your leadership for next year since we're getting your current leadership is we're ending our two year term here. So, so anyway, here's the latest. Okay, the latest. Thank you. Uh, so the nominating committee has met once to uh, discuss and establish our internal processes. The next step is to solicit more suggestions for who you would like to see uh, serving on the residence council. So this year, we have four positions that'll be open. Uh, we're gonna replace Paul, finally. <laughs> uh, also, Suetta and Linda, the secretary and treasurer respectively, rotate off. And one at least, at large member, Doreen, is ending her two-year term as well. So we have four positions we're looking for. 
president, secretary, treasurer, and one at large. We're going to put a, uh, a one-year term on the secretary this coming year to establish that rotating term spot so that uh, we don't have so much overlap with year-to-year uh, -year boards. So you're going to all be receiving this uh, notice in your mail, email or in your mailbox as soon as I get them, get them there. And we're asking for your suggestions back in my mailbox, 65 Sycamore, which is the upper left-hand side if you don't want to search too hard for it, uh, by Saturday, September 30th. At that point, we will take those suggestions, work with uh, our group to establish the slate of officers for the coming year. Uh, we'll be contacting individuals as we go through this to gauge their interest to discuss the positions. And we do ask for your uh, consideration, your open consideration for uh, these conversations and these positions. So thank you very much. Look forward to uh, giving you a slate of officers by the annual meeting that uh, we can all uh, go forward with. Thank you, John. And of course, it's important. You can nominate yourself, so don't feel that I have to just nominate that neighbor that I don't get along with, but nominate yourself to serve in one of these very important positions. It won't take much of your time during the year. It's very low key, uh, so please consider that. All right, next we have uh, Donna is going to give us a little update on the holiday craft fair. This mic must be running low as well. I don't think it's as loud as it was. It wasn't as loud. Speak louder. Yeah. <laughs> well, all of you have seen notification of the uh, craft fair, which is to be held on December 1st and 2nd. It's the first Friday and Saturday in December. And we have a number of residents signed up with all sorts of crafts that you've seen. Um, textile things, like woven things, knitted things. Um, quilted things. We have woodworkers who are showing their works, um, fragrant soaps, note cards, paintings. And I'm sure there are a lot more of you who will who, would, who create things, but I haven't shared them yet. And we'd love to have more of you share. Um, there will be additional sign-up sheets sent to you in case you've already misplaced yours. This year, we're going to have a hands-on table. So if any of you feel like you have something you'd like to share, you can donate it to the hands-on table. There'll also be supplies there to, for you to make things at the table. And anything sold at the hands-on table, any of the proceeds from that will go to the staff appreciation fund. The rest of you, if you're selling anything, have your own table, you can decide what to do with your money. You can donate it or you can keep it. But we'd love to have more of you sign up. Our staff is also available, can also sign up if they're available on those days. But we'd love to have more of you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. And now, Lad. Lad is going to talk to us uh, the upcoming Kendall College program for next month. If you speak louder, I guess it can sound better, right? Speak louder? Yeah. Okay, I th hope you can hear me. Um, at this point, I think I have negative minutes, so I'll maybe just dis disappear. Um, Four weeks from today, we have a wonderful Kendall College, a very special one. It is the 100th Kendall College, 100th centennial. And we also have a special centennial event. Uh, the pianist who played for Nancy Epley's 100th birthday is going to present a series of three recitals he's calling them, entitled The French Connection. One will be on Mozart. Believe it or not, there's a French connection. He was in Paris at the age of seven <laughs> and composed some music at the age of seven. You'll get to hear that. The second will be Chopin, and you've probably heard that name before. And then finally, the third concert is Claude DBC. And um, they're all different. They represent different periods in music, but they're all interesting, exciting. And I know Tim will do a wonderful job. 
So, 100th anniversary, 100th a centennial performer, but there's more. <laughs> there's no charge for this. <laughs> so you can come, I hope you will come. And then finally, marketing, bless its heart, is providing a wine reception at the end of Tim's first lecture. And that will reduce our water consumption, I'm sure, by quite a bit. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lad. Now, Ted Burroughs wanted to have a... You have nothing to say? Ted Burroughs wanted to be on the program, but he had an, a dental appointment, and now he does not want to be on the program. He didn't tell me what he wanted to say, but I'm sure it was very important information that you'll have to wait for another time. So that gives me an opportunity to finish up with a one last item, which is the... Uh, submit the capital budget submissions that we received from uh, all of you. Uh, we received 57 uh, suggestions from the residents here, uh, many of which uh, will hopefully will be implemented, maybe not next year, but the following year. And so the council did meet, we did meet uh, last week and we reviewed all the 57 suggestions. And we came, we came up, we're required to come up with a priority list. And so let me tell you what the priority list, what we came up with that we will submit to Felicia. And then next week, Felicia and the administration will meet and discuss uh, what capital budgets they're gonna, they'll create for next year. Uh, the first, the, and this necessarily, uh, it's pretty much in priority. The first one, we're, we ask that they install sidewalks on Kendall Drive, Spring Lot Drive, Sunnyside Drive, where there is no sidewalks, to, so people don't have to walk in the middle of the road when they don't want to take their walk. So that's that was our top recommendation. Um, also, we, uh, there was a suggestion that they install a separate sound system in Kendall Hall for movies and live streaming. Uh, I don't understand it, but I guess uh, for movies and live streaming, you need a, a a different type of system that we have here to make it so you make it clearer to watch movies and live streaming. So that is our another suggestion we're just going to submit. Um, we also are going to request that they install a shade covering for their pergola on Sunrise Ridge. I think we got more requests for that. It's that pergola in the middle of, of Sunrise Ridge, which is open to the sun and they've requested some type of shade covering for that. So hopefully they'll be able to uh, install that. Uh, we also asked for new floor covering for the fitness center weight room to replace the, uh, the worn out carpet there. Um, there's also, we also are gonna request that uh, they purchase for Sunnyside to the five guest rooms, a comfortable, at least a comfortable chair and a a reading lamp so when you're there at night you have a place to sit and read uh, also uh, also to purchase new wardrobes for Sunnyside what they have there now is the old antique wardrobes where you know back in the old days you used to fold all your clothes and put them on shelves and so there's no place in many of the rooms to just hang your wardrobe and so we were going to request that they purchase some um, uh, wardrobes for the Sunnyside guest rooms we also request that they install uh, improved interior decoration, directional signage on campus. And I think that'll be uh, considered by the, the Washington Lee students that Todd talked about to also how can we improve the signage, uh, the outside signage on campus so people don't get lost to visit us. Uh, there's also requests that they construct four covered parking spaces near lot six, which is down by the fitness center. Uh, to provide more covered spaces available to residents to park their cars and if they desire. Um, and also there was a request which we uh, to install motorized shades in the top windows at the fitness center. And when you're in the, in the exercise room there, the sun comes in that those top windows there and if they want to, we want them to install some some type of shading system. Those are the, the 10 top items that the uh, the committee is going to submit to uh, the administration for their consideration. 
Now, all, some of the 57 items, uh, you know, in order to be a capital budget item, it has to be over $1,000. So obviously, there were a few requests that were not did not meet that criteria, or the request uh, is already on the capital budget for this year. Um, so uh, we'll be anyway. These are the 10 items that will that the council selected among the 57 to present for the administration. Everybody still the way? Well, amazingly, we've, we've, uh, we were able to conclude this meeting with just five minutes overlap. And I was really concerned in the beginning, but I thank you all for staying here, for listening to us. Uh, it's been very informative. And I want to thank Todd for his presentation. And he'll, he'll make those slides uh, available in, in the library later on so you can peruse those. And just remember, drink more wine, less water, less we got to save money. Thank you very much for coming here.